On today's World Inside, a fruitful 15th BRIC Summit with six new members and a push for trade in local currencies. Also bearing fruit is Chinese President Xi Jinping's state visit to South Africa. On the larger significance of these and more, details from South African Ambassador to China, Shabonga Kwele. From Johannesburg, I'm Tian Wei. The 15th BRICS Summit is an absolutely successful one on BRICS expansion and consensus on using more local currencies among BRICS economies. Meanwhile, also witnessed a fruitful state visit by the Chinese president to South Africa on the occasion of the 25th anniversary of the diplomatic relations between the two countries. Among those who are well informed and have been working hard on both tasks, is Sia Bunga Kwele, South African ambassador to China. I had an in-depth interview with him right after the BRICS summit came to a conclusion. When we talked, we still could feel the excitement in the air. Ms. Ambassador, I didn't know I would have a chance to see you here in Johannesburg. Well, thank you, welcome. Welcome anyway to Johannesburg. Uh, this is our industrial hub, Johannesburg, yeah. and uh, we're very happy that we are all here attending the BRICS Summit. Mm -hmm. And uh, also we had a very successful state visit by His Excellency President Xi Jinping. This is a historical moment, as you said, yeah. Ms. Ambassador. Not only for the state visit, which is extremely crucial, but also for the BRICS expansion and the future of BRICS as the voice of the Global South. Ms. Ambassador, you've been with the presidents throughout the programs. Tell me more about your thoughts on the achievements of this historic summit. First thing, particularly as an ambassador who was sent in China, I've witnessed that uh, the strength of BRICS it lies really in the mutual respect of our leaders. We may be from different parts of the world, different cultures, but what binds us is the love of our people, love of development and shared prosperity for all. Uh, China in particular, President Xi Jinping has been very supportive of the outcomes of this BRICS summit. Uh, we have agreed to add new members uh, to the BRICS family, six members. Six of them. And uh, we congratulate them because it was by consensus of our leaders. Most people then never thought we'll have an agreement. They'll focus that we have differences there and there, but they never knew that when our leaders meet, they've got a good rapport. They look at the strategic objectives of our partnership, this cooperation of BRICS. Uh, that it's a partnership for development, is a partnership for peace, is a partnership for advancing multilateralism and ensuring that the voice of the Global South is ahead at a, at, a, at a multilateral level. Here in Johannesburg, our leaders also agree on the criteria and ask our ministers to continue to consider these other nations who are having this aspiration of joining this. At this, this moment, we, yeah, this is extremely important because you are setting up an institutional system yes. for the future of BRICS in terms yeah. of membership. But there are not specific details being given regarding the process, uh, the principles, the standards, and the ways. So how would you describe very briefly uh, how it works institutional wise. So <clears throat> even in some of these countries you'll find that some of them already they are members of our bank but uh, others are very critical in growing economies and uh, important in uniting their regions because we are for unity not for uh, uh, divisions. Right. Uh, they are important as a global trading partners even of our current BRICS partners and other developing nations. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the criteria I, I think they are considered, but there are many 
specific details which have been agreed here at the outcome of the, of the document, but that's why they say the ministers will continue to fine tune this so that we make it uh, uh, more objective, mm -hmm. but also at the same time not so difficult for right. countries to join because it's not an exclusive club, but uh, there must be a cogent criteria. And I'm sure next year uh, there'll be more members uh, which will join. You recall what uh, when we put this uh, BRICS expansion again agenda in Beijing last yes. year, we put clear mandates from our leaders, our top officials, go and work on the criteria and bring something which we can work on right. and agree upon. That's what they've done. Now they've tasked our ministers of foreign affairs, go and work hard and see how do we bring other more developing nations to this family. And uh, they will, they will succeed. And they will succeed, they will. of course. Uh, you think about uh, China and South Africa together with others uh, working on not only the membership expansion, but also the use of local currencies. 1.5 billion rand uh, actually has been uh, issued uh, yeah. by the new development bank. Yeah. Now that is another step forward for the local currency to be used among the BRICS the members. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, and the heard is very successful. Starting a point for us to trade in our own currencies because it reduces the cost. It reduces these other these barriers which are put by other political means elsewhere. So that's a starting point. But we are not only stopping there in trading of our own currencies, but uh, we are also encouraging all the BRICS members to really internationalize the trading of their own currencies. If you look, for instance, China is the largest trading part of many countries. Can you imagine the, the impact of a RMB, uh, yuan, yuan, in terms of uh, if we trade more and more, particularly with Africa, it will assist those developing countries. So it's going to have a very positive impact. But we are not limited to that. We are looking at uh, new forms of currency. We are looking at digital currencies. There are securities. Once we are satisfied with those securities, uh, how can we use those for trading? Because trade must never be interrupted. As BRICS countries, we are saying the global supply and the extra chains must remain open. Right. We must remain uh, committed to global trade and uh, ensuring that uh, there's fair competition. Uh, other than what we are seeing now where my own president was speaking about the experience, for instance, some of your companies have uh, heard uh, the issues of decoupling. We don't want decoupling. So those are the things we are saying, but all these things they teach us that we can actually develop our own technologies. That's how my president was speaking to President Xi Jinping, saying he's witnessed some of these companies because he's very interested in technology, my president, coming with their own operating system, now developing their own chips. But we didn't need all that because we could trade, we could buy those Indeed. things, yes. And now it's hurting everybody's <laughs> yeah. interest. Yeah. The, the, the issue, for instance, we're given to the bank to look at the stability of these systems and so that we can really implement, because we don't want to theorize, one things we can practically implement. And uh, that's what is also bringing more interest from other developing nations, because they know the suffering they, they face with, the, with all these things. I mean, the current sanctions, they're not, uh, some of them are not UN sanctions, but they've got huge impact on our economy. It's unilateral sanctions. These unilateral sanctions, they've got huge impact on developing. So that's why we always say it's uh, not about what the, some in the media call de-dollarization. We've got nothing against the currency itself. We have got challenges with sometimes the use of the currencies to bully others. That's what is the biggest challenge. That's why we're looking at more stability and more stable uh, uh, currencies for global trading uh, uh, system. Of course, you will hear a skeptical reporting about all of this, right? <laughs> Saying, well, developing countries, do you have the um, economic power in order to support what your ideas are? The, 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 the challenge in terms of development is I wish they can ask themselves 
Why only 30 countries are called developed countries today? Who closed the door? And for what reason? As BRICS countries were pushing for a win-win situation, not to develop at the expense of others. And uh, so that's a difference uh, which, we, which, we, which we are having with some of the outlook, for instance. For us, if I get something from you and you grow, we, we both benefit. Yes. There's a more lasting solution. Yes, we are not big enough now, but we are growing. Yes. We are growing and we are determined. Uh, and uh, we, 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 if we work together, we believe we will be stronger together. That's why when others can come and uh, we'll work with them to improve and learn from each other so they can also be stronger. Right. The impact in terms of a global economy share and the global trade is quite significant. And uh, we hope that uh, that won't send them to be now reactive and starting to be more fear and, and uh, putting sanctions or bullying us. Uh, but uh, it show, it puts sense on them that they can cooperate with us. Uh, the tensions sometimes we have, uh, whether you're talking about our trading system with some of these developing developed countries, uh, we are often threatened, if you do this, we will remove this trade ag agreement. We don't like that. We want things which are stable. I did notice that your foreign minister said before the uh, BRICS summit that uh, this is not a competition against the G7, this is not a bloc, and you heard that repeatedly by all the leaders in their speeches. Uh, Chinese president also said this is not a bloc, this is not an anti-Western alliance, this is not. No, it is not a bloc. Like I'm saying, I hope they can hear this message. There's not a single BRICS leader uh, who's against the developed North. We believe we can work together with them. We can make this world, this humanity, a better world to live in. Because we've got global challenges which need all of us. Uh, <clears throat> so you have heard it from all the BRICS leaders that uh, all what we are concerned about is development. That's what unites us. That's what unites us, and that's the urgency. Peace. Peace and <laughs> Inclusion, not exclusion. So we, 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 we believe some of them will start hearing us. That's wonderful. And, uh, work with us instead of working against us. The, the important thing, whenever you talk to somebody, and uh, if we talk with mutual respect, we can overcome all challenges of the world because we are facing global, big global threat. We are facing climate change. We are facing energy transition. We are facing, we are agreed at the United Nations that will deal with poverty and eliminate all these SDGs. SDGs. We now are now we, are left, we are left with seven years. And most of us are still far from achieving these things. So all this cooperation, whether it's BRICS, whether with China, for instance, in our side, Global Development right. Initiative, they help us to cooperate so that we can achieve this United Nations uh, Sustainable Development Goals. If you look at the BRICS members, uh, the yeah. original five, yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot of them, four of them, has uh, tremendous links with uh, yeah. Africa. Yeah. Uh, of course, Brazil is beginning to uh, meanwhile, Russia uh, yeah. and uh, China, uh, as well as India, have been having some uh, long-term relationship with the African countries. No, we congratulate them because that's visionary. You know, Africa is the most youthful continent. I, would, I know you will <laughs> congratulate them, but it, it, it but, here uh, brings an interesting yes. thing, that it's so a it's, complexity. It's, it's a, it's a also, because if they invest in the Africa, there's a strength of growth for the future, it's Africa. So it's only leaders with a long-term vision, not just looking at the current term as a leader, long-term vision because they can see Africa is becoming more peaceful, Africa has got more youth, which is now getting, yes. uh, getting more educated, right. more innovative. Very dynamic. So the trade within Africa is we're putting infrastructure. It's just going to expand tremendously. 
So the opportunities for win-win industrialization instead of transporting these raw materials to far distances at a huge cost and uh, carbon emissions. Right. So all those things, putting those industrial areas in Africa, is very strategic from the BRICS. Uh, even Brazil, I listened very carefully to President Lula. He was saying, yes, he, he felt said that uh, during the uh, uh, last few years there's been sort of a drop, but he's trying to push the link with Africa. So we hope this link is not just going to be with Africa, but with all the developing regions of the world, right. with all the global I want to move on to yeah. something very close to your heart, Mr. Ambassador. <laughs> that is the bilateral state oh. visit. <laughs> of course, so we have already mentioned many of those yeah. pieces in, uh, in the earlier discussion, but let's focus on this. State visit, first time after the pandemic. Mm. This time, extremely fruitful if you read through the joint statement yeah. by the two sides. No, what is important, uh, particularly with this state visit, is the fourth state visit by President Xi Jinping, right. just uh, within 10 years. <clears throat> so that's quite significant, uh, because uh, we understand President Xi Jinping is a very busy leader uh, with many commitments, leading a very big nation and so on. But uh, for him to come on a state visit to South Africa this time was very important because China is a friend of South Africa. Like uh, they repeated it again, like they said in Bali uh, when they met last year, that uh, our relationship is, can be described as a relation of friends and comrades. They repeated the same thing in Pretoria. The, that's very important because they send a very clear message about our own relationship. Okay. Our relationship with China is at a comprehensive strategic level. One may say this is ceiling, but our leader said, let's take it higher than the ceiling. <laughs> That's your work also. <laughs> <laughs> let's take it higher. And they've ex done exactly that. Now we're not just talking about the relationship, we're aligning our key programs like the BRI and our economic reconstruction program. That's a huge, that's a huge thing. It's going to have a huge impact because once these programs are aligned, there will be greater implementation, accelerated implementation for the benefit of our people. Uh, this relationship this time, uh, under the leadership of, uh, we signed so many agreements which are related to the economy. Uh, in terms of uh, also people people exchange in terms of science and technology and skills development. Right. So these are important because China, as I've said, uh, in terms of we need to cooperate in the green economy, digital economy, these are the agreements we're signing, ocean economy and so on, so that we remain globally competitive. Right. So we support each other. And uh, <clears throat> China also appreciates our principal stance on the One China policy and, uh, and uh, our efforts in, in, uh, in Africa. And uh, my president also thanked President Xi because when he was uh, sharing the African Union, this when we hit by the pandemic. It was, took just a call and a letter to President Xi and Ch President Xi Jinping never hesitated and assisted him and the African leaders to deal with the uh, most pressing uh, needs and requirements to deal with the pandemic in Africa. That's why they were re emphasizing that the, the true friends is what a friend in need, those friends when you come when you need them most, they are your friends indeed. And that's why <clears throat> uh, people were asking why, why did we single arm out of so many leaders who are visiting. We've got more than 50 leaders visiting South Africa for a state visit. And why did we honor him uh, with the highest medal of South Africa? Uh, it's because he's been central to improving the relations and strengthening the relations between South Africa and China. And at the same time, working with us to strengthen the relations with Africa. It is, it is through the leadership of the Communist Party under President Xi Jinping leadership, which yeah. has made these huge advances. And uh, it was just for us to say, we recognize your effort because people are doing good. 
who are doing public good, they must be recognized. You can't only recognize the person when he's no more. So that's why we felt on behalf of South Africa and my own leader, my own president, Cyril Ramaphosa said, let's give President Xi this token of appreciation the highest honor of South Africa. And you, of course, had the opportunity to be with both of the presidents when the bilateral visit <laughs> happened, right? Yeah. And even you received the President Xi at the airport, and he told you something about his thoughts on China-Africa, so yeah. especially China-South Africa. So yeah. maybe if it's not a state secret, <laughs> the, can you share with us? The, no, it's not a secret, but uh, as you could see, first thing is the rapport between our two leaders. It's very good. President Xi Jinping, when he stepped out and saw President Ramaphosa, President Ramaphosa insisted, I'm going, whether it's late, I'm going to receive because he's my friend. Uh, he's done good for our relations. And that's what he did. Uh, it was late at night, but we were there, received, and uh, you could see the 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 relief. And uh, what touched me most, uh, even during all this discussion, that uh, I never pre know you, President Xi, has been so many times to South Africa, even when he was a governor <laughs> of provinces. Yeah. He knows this country very well. Mm -hmm. He was telling, I know this place, I know this city, I know this city. I also came as a vice president, I also came now as a president, <laughs> and uh, mentioning all these things. And what he said, I also watch you my president, uh, your keen interest in Chinese culture and history. And uh, I want to say, I also love your country like you love our country, China. To me, that was uh, the most important thing because it describes what, uh, that this relationship is not just artificial. It's a relationship built out of strong foundation. It's a relationship built uh, through suffering when we went to China, when we were fighting apartheid, and the Communist Party of China decided to support us. Now that we are free in the last 25 years, our relations have just flourished, right. and China is still supporting us. If you look at our investments, uh, the trade uh, that we said with the largest trading partners, and uh, the investment from Chinese, they continue to increase. In this place we are in right now, this uh, building, uh, our president holds the investment conference every year. This year I came here in April. The first company to be announced, those companies who announced new investment, it was six billion rand. It was a Chinese mining company. <laughs> and many more who were here because they feel confident in investing in our economy because of the confidence yeah. they derive from the relationship we have between our leaders and our two countries. Mr. Ambassador, before we go, I have one crucial question to ask you. We noticed in the bilateral agreement signed by both sides that there is a specific paragraph devoting to industrialization. Yes. And particularly describing that there will be manufacturing centers yes. being established beside, near the area of uh, production centers of raw materials. So tell us how it works, because earlier, Mr. Yes. Ambassador, as you know very well, there has been in, uh, a lot of African voices looking at how are we going to yeah. be industrialized. Now, first of all, if you look at our trade, uh, sometimes we run at deficits, but our leaders said, no, find practical ways. How do we address this? And one way of uh, dealing with it is to increase our production of our manufactured products. When uh, Minister Wang of uh, Commerce came here, we spent a lot of time dealing with this. He came with a huge delegation from China of uh, people who they made deals worth 2.2 billion rand in partnering in terms of manufacturing. So the agreement now talks about demonstration areas for manufacturing excellence for manufacturing and value addition. Right. Uh, it's very important that we start this thing here because even our African leaders, as you correctly say, they want exactly the same thing, uh, <clears throat> where we can have partnerships, Chinese companies, global companies, partner with South African companies right. to increase production here of these quality products mm -hmm. so that we can transport sort of a value-added products. That's how we can balance our trade. 
but also we reduce the emissions because instead of transporting just raw materials, it's very costly. So for Africa's Africa continental free trade area, that's very important. Uh, mm -hmm. If we can show and demonstrate these uh, industrial zones, which are successful, other leaders from Africa can come and learn from it so that we can expand it, so that we have a win-win situation, not only for Africa, but for developing countries who can replicate this type of cooperation. So as you everywhere. said, it's not just infrastructure anymore, it's industrialization. Industrialization. Yeah, and there can be enormous amount of uh, space for cooperation as a result. Yeah, but even within FOCAC, for instance, you know, uh, the implementation of the FOCAC agreement last uh, 2021 in terms of uh, capacity building, uh, in terms of production itself. Uh, Africa is very big in agriculture, but they need to modernize their agricultural production. I often go along in your country, beautiful country, whenever I take a train and look around that last one, I see they've got small pieces of land, but their production per hectare is much higher. Right. Uh, because they're using modern technology. Those are the things we really want uh, to yeah. increase the production in Africa. Right. In South Africa. Of course, this time we also heard from Chinese President's speech uh, that there will be satellite uh, data exchange oh, centers, uh, uh, innovation uh, park, yeah. as well as AI study group among the uh, BRICS countries uh, that China is going to support to establish all of these and make sure it would benefit the developing world. Thank you. Yeah. No, AI is very important, a new platform. Uh, for development. Without AI, you cannot advance as quick. So we really appreciate China volunteering to yeah. host this right. uh, innovation center for AI technologies and demonstration because it's for the benefit not only of BRICS countries but all developing countries. I remember President Ramaphosa said in his introduction of the state leaders that are uh, present at the uh, summit in an open uh, way, he said, and we also have China who has, uh, who has decided to assist the development of Africa. That's yeah. how he described yeah. the, the China before the Chinese speaker, Chinese leader spoke. No, that's very important because we often get this narrative that uh, we are colonizing other African friends. China has been the partner in the infrastructure development. Now China and other BRICS countries, they are joining us as partners in the industrialization of Africa. That's good for Africa. That's good for win-win situation and common prosperity. Thank you. Mr. Ambassador, what a pleasure. That's what is a shared future for men. Mankind. Indeed. Thank you. That's my interview with Sia Bonga Kweli, the South African ambassador to China. With that, we're coming to the end of the series of special programs focusing on the 15th BRICS Summit in Johannesburg. On behalf of my teams here and in Beijing, thanks for watching, and I'll see you back in China. Bye for now.